but what we're doing today is to make a machine simply recognize your face. Okay, so we're talking about facial recognition here. Thanks for joining us for another Make a Monday episode. And this week, I'm here with Noor. Yeah, thank you for calling me back again. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we quite like what you did the last time, so you get another chance to show All us right, what you can do. You. This time, better. And uh, what are we doing in this episode, Noor? So, considering what we were working with the Home Assistant system, but today we'll be taking a little bit dimension towards um, a different stuff. Mm. So today's episode would be about how to find the basis of what we'll be going to do in the next episodes. Okay. And so the first thing would be to what we're doing today is to make a machine simply recognize your face. Okay. So we're talking about facial recognition here. Exactly. And this facial recognition would be not based on the Google image recognition or Amazon or IBM. We'll be building something on our own. Okay. Because Google image already has a, so a solution that you could use right now if you wanted. You don't have exactly. to do anything. I think all the major clouds have that right now. Yeah. So, so what we want to do is uh, to um, break the ice the classical devs have with the this new technologies. We'll get into it and we'll see that how can you do this on your Raspberry Pi and mm -hmm. just simply use it. Okay. So we can in future further use it for organizing, uh, making your Home Assistant recognize to let you or your family enter or not, things like that. We can okay. do many crazy stuff with that. All right. So using facial recognition to allow access or to whatever. Exactly. And the main reason that we don't want to use Google Image is because if we use Google Image, then we don't learn anything. Of course. And um, other reasons would be that you don't have to be always connected to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So you could, if you make a small recognizing system, that can be deployed offline. Mm -hmm. It's something good. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, what are we? How do we go about setting up something like that? So, so just in this episode, we're going to talk uh, the concept of the facial recognition software that we're going to set up, and how we go about uh, getting it ready. In the next episode, we will we will take it a step further. But for now, all right. So, tell us tell us the steps that we need to get something like this up and running. Take it as a um, Facial recognition 101 for every person who has experience with Python or programming, and we will um, dumb down all the mathematical obstacles. And Thank God, math's not my strong point. So we will be just considering the concepts, and okay. uh, because I, this this is a phase where I'm learning with the viewer as well. So I have tried to dumb down everything as much as possible Good. to make it simple and easy to go through. We're all learning together, folks. So. The first thing, what which was the difficult part, was the data gathering. Mm -hmm. And the data gathering had some issues. We will discuss the word about that, how to prepare your data, mm -hmm. what are the tools that's required, how easily in one step, single step, two single steps you can do, two steps you can do, and make your all your stuff. And the third would be to have a juice from all the tutorials and examples that I saw and made it more most as as much simple as possible. And by using these little tools what we built, you can make something on top of it and mm -hmm. then directly use it. Okay. So these, okay. So data gathering. Data gathering. Tools, the software itself, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, what are the um, pros and cons of using that and using this and using that. We will see that later okay. when we jump into our code. Okay. So. How about discussing the first part, data gathering part? But, uh, sure. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the first huddle I had with the data gathering, and then we'll see what the tool steps, which were I was missing, we were facing in, and the third, what I intended to use in the mm -hmm. future videos. Okay. So the data gathering part. Now, for this a really simple tutorial, we will have a really simple data set. Okay. So I tried to. Um, use the um, images a little bit online. So, but let, what what is the data set before oh, before okay. you explain that? Great, great, great. Thank you for reminding me that. Good question. Right. That's why I'm here. Plus one, plus one. <laughs> so, what is the data set that um, what we are building right now? It's it's we are teaching a kid of to recognize yes or no, good or bad, things like that. This is what we will be doing in our tool. Okay. So for tool to recognize me, it has to recognize my pictures, my face, and 
pictures of not my face, pictures of my family, and pictures yeah, of yeah. not my family, and things like that. Okay. And this, for this example, we have to keep it really uh, minute so that we don't have to format the noise. It just yeah. This is just an example. Exactly. But in a real real scenario, you would have a lot more data that you would work from. Exactly, a lot more data, um, and and it's it completely depends on what you are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. If it's just a simple thing as that, that if, if it's, is, is it a lemon or is it an orange or is it an apple, you can make a simple decision tree. That's that's not a big problem. But if you want to do more complex things, you have to um, get more uh, complex algorithms to okay. be, we have to use. So data set we will be using here is used um, in supervised learning. So we are supervising it and we are teaching, hey machine, this is good, this is bad, this is true, this is false. Right. And there is the other part of the machine learning called unsupervised learning, we will be not touching that right now. Okay. So we are explicitly telling machine. Okay. But this can cause two problems. Number one is the overfitting. Like okay. we teach the machine so much of the data that it um, recognizes only that part and nothing else. Okay. And the other is the underfitting that we are unable to teach the machine. Okay, so we don't give in, it enough data in exactly. other words. So in between there is a balance, we have to maintain that balance. Mm -hmm. And in this example you will not see that because um, it's just a basic route or if I would be able to uh, show a big thing, it would take much time yeah. and much more um, understanding would be required. Mm -hmm. It's just basic route. So, um, if you want to uh, see the data, the first part what I did was to gather the data of all these famous characters, Aaron Carter, Steve Jobs, and everything. Okay. And uh, images were in different formats, different pixels, and everything was creating a bit of a problem for me. So what I did was to have my own data. So okay, which, which does make sense. This is me, <laughs> awkward pose, and this is not me. So the machine has to recognize which is me and which is not, and by using these images. Simple. Okay, so anyone who comes up to your door with their hand over their face is not going to be let in because chance. It's a chance. It's a chance. Okay. So, um, of course, that I decide that you can build a complex thing on top of it. Right. It's just to um, have a taste of that monster, which is yeah. right now hovering yeah. over our head, just a little bit, and then we jump into because, it. Because because that's a large part of this process is the data. Exactly. The data. Exactly. So. That was all the data part. Mm -hmm. We will see in the details at how, how you have to keep the data, um, what should be the um, data pixel size and everything. We will see that in just when we were coding, when we yeah. jump into it. Because when you say, uh, when you're talking about positive and negative data, so you've got the, the pictures of, of your face and the pictures not of your face, does that include things that are out of focus? Um, well, um, what do you mean by autofocus? Like, mm. like um, well, let's say, or a partial match, or things like that. Yes, yes. Uh, for example, when I was using it, and I tested against my brothers, one of my brother matched ninety percent. <laughs> I was like, holy Oops. shit! So I skipped his uh, images. I was like, no, we will just consider on on this one. That's so, interesting. Of course, but. Uh, these algorithms work like a magic black box. Mm -hmm. And the more data you have, the machine makes some sense of it. it okay. And of course, the better the camera you have, the more high definition pictures you have, the more the background is the same at, uh, in the end. So it requires more of the pre-processing of the data before feeding it into the okay. uh, machine itself. Got it. Then there are lots of requirements such as um, excluding the high definition part is that if it's a continuous video stream, then something else. Or, for example, the iPhone has a new feature which captures your depth of your face, mm. and it has the complete different set. It's not an image, it's a complete different way of capturing the data sets. Yeah. So it depends on what you are training your thing from. Okay. Right, so. All right. So we've gathered the data. Yeah. What, what is the next step? The second step is um, we'll be using Python, and uh, there is a lot of support available in this uh, Python environment. We have too many, too many people supporting it, so we have different um, frameworks. We have different way to use it. So I will be preferring to that everyone who is new to it just download Anaconda Python. We will put the link in the description. Okay, and. Uh, once you have it, it has all the suit required for this machine learning. So everything already everything installed, is with, installed along with Anaconda. So what okay. you'll just have to do is uh, launch a Jupyter Notebook. 
Jupyter. And Jupyter okay. Notebook will help you have an interactive Python at all stages, which is good that um, you don't have to repeat one, one of the steps again, again, like what we classically do in all the Python scripts. So what Jupyter does is create a block of code that you don't have to run again. Again, you just can continue after that. We'll see. Okay. How, so you can how... fix things on the fly because it's busy. Exactly. It's finished with this block of code, and exactly. you can make changes exactly. to it, even though it's maybe executing something somewhere else. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that was just the tool part. I'll just use Anaconda. And the third part would be, which we'll be using, that how can we save our trained machine? Mm -hmm. And how can we use it on fly afterwards? Okay. Because you don't have to train the data every time. Yeah. Well, theoretically, you can. As more images you have, yeah. the more you feed into the data, and that's a loop which makes your AI better and better. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, you just have to use it, use a piece. So um, we will, today, that we, when, when we'll be ending this video, um, it will be ending something that we created a machine and we saved its state, and then we can just use it okay. again again. That is it from the setup part. And um, if you have any things that you, that you, could, you have problems with, you can ask me right now, because in the, in the moving forward, we will be having something to just do, and uh, I want There'll be no time to... for questions, so but, what, you, yeah, what you're saying is yeah. this is the time for questions, exactly. so everyone, I must shut my mouth. Everyone who is working, no, 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 not that. So everyone who is uh, working with us gets on the same page. Yeah. So all the people who are afraid of this machine learning, let's give a chance and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So. I should ask you questions, or they should ask you questions? Oh yes, when, well they can. Ask questions if you have in the comment section below. Oh, I can do my best, I can. I have my seniors, some teachers, some professors, people here and there. I'll just contact every one of them to um, <laughs> answer you. <laughs> or from my understanding, a little bit of understanding. Okay, so that's, so that's the setup for our uh, facial recognition project that we're going to be doing. Next episode, as Noor explained, we are going to set up the data, and in the episode after that, we are going to create a use for our facial recognition stuff that we've done. Um, until then, subscribe to our channel, click the little bell, and uh, if you haven't noticed, in our last episode, which had to do with particulate matter measurements on New Year's Eve that we did, uh, we're running a competition where you can win 3D printers and some Maker Monday boxes. Uh, go and check that video out, and uh, all you need to do is comment on that video what projects you'd like to see us Am I do eligible in the future. For that? No, you, can, you cannot win. All right. Um, no. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.